Okay, um, I can't really find any tutorials on how to do this anywhere for some reason, but this is just a video on how to install an OS to another hard drive. So, see disk zero right here. This is a 120 gig drive, and I'm wanting to install Linux Mint to this. This will work with installing Linux, uh, Windows, I'm sure FreeBSD, but I'm not sure about Mac OS, because Mac OS, you know, can be really difficult. Even if you're on a Mac, I'm not sure how well this would work. So, yeah. But all you need is to... No, don't. It does. All you need is to be able to plug in the drive while booted into the OS, which I can because I'm on a desktop, and VMware Workstation Player. The player is the free one, I'm pretty sure, but you just got to download it. The install process is simple. But if you open it up, you have to run it as an administrator. You'll see for later. So once you open it, just go to create a new VM. And then install our disk. Go in here and select what you want to install. So I'm going to install Linux Mint 21.1. You can say I want to install an OS later, but it'll just be easier if you just do install our disk image. Because this will automatic if you're on Windows, it'll automatically do everything for you. So as soon as you boot in, it'll go straight to the the part where it has like the copying Windows files and like that on it. It can't detect this because it doesn't have Linux Mint support. So I'll need to do this later. So if you click next, you have to choose what you're using. I'm using Linux Ubuntu. Uh, it doesn't have Linux Mint, but it is based on Ubuntu. So VMware name. Well, VM name, it doesn't matter. Location, it doesn't matter. So now we're creating the size for the virtual hard disk. Uh, I'm just going to set this to 1 because I honestly don't know how to create a VM without a, without a hard drive at all. It, I don't know how. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but the reason I'm doing this in VMware, even though I prefer VirtualBox, is that a uh, hard drive pass-through, which we're going to be using, is really bad on uh, VirtualBox. You have to do this and that, and this isn't supported, and then you have to do this, whereas it's built in natively into VMware, so it just works better. But in VirtualBox, you can say, don't create a hard drive. It, I don't know how to not create a hard drive with VMware, but you can just not store as single files to make it easier. And then don't customize hardware, and then finish. So if you're running Windows or something that has the automatically install thing, there'll be a button that says, uh, boot into this VM." As soon as it's created, deselect that. We're not going to do that. So now if you go to edit virtual machine settings, here we'll have the hardware that we can customize. The reason I said to do it, not to do it before, is that now we can actually add hard drives. So I'm going to go to the hard disk, remove it. I'm also going to go to the RAM, set it to 16 gigs, which is the recommended amount for my uh, system. You just set it to whatever the blue is, and really nice, you can just click on the 8 gig by 16 or whatever. And then number of cores, I'm just going to set it to 8 because that's how much I have. If you don't know how much you have, just go to Task Manager, go to Performance, and then CPU, and it'll say right here, of course. This will make it slower if you're doing other stuff on your PC right now, but since this is all I'm doing, uh, it'll just mean the VM will be faster. Now go to Add, and go to Hard Disk. And here, I don't know what'll happen if you select a different one. I haven't tried, but I'm just selecting SATA because I'm connecting the hard drive through SATA, so it'll just be simpler. And then choose a physical disk, click next. And here, if you, it'll give you an error. It's a really cryptic error that doesn't actually tell you what, because like there will be a UAC prompt, and then it'll say it won't have permission, even though it just had a UAC prompt. But if you, that's if you don't run as administrator. So if you get the error, just rerun it as admin. And then device. <coughs> so. It'll show your devices. So open disk management, which is built-in tool, and then look for the drive you want. I want this one that's 120 gigs, and this is disk zero. So device disk zero. You can use individual partitions. Say if you want a dual boot, you can create one partition that's for this OS and give it that partition. But it gives me just it gives vague errors that I can't figure out how to fix if you do that. So I'm just gonna use entire disk, and you can just say oh only install it half of the disk in the actual installer for the os and then name uh, i don't care now if you just click okay you can play the virtual machine shut up and it'll start 
when it starts, if you left click, your cursor will disappear. But as it says in the top left, you press Control and Alt, uh, you'll get your cursor back. And now it's booting it to Windows 11. And that's because that's what I have on it. So if it restarts, sometimes it'll boot directly into the ISO. Sometimes it doesn't. But if it doesn't, just spam Escape at the start. Thanks, it didn't. Restart. Just spam Escape the whole time. That's the BIOS screaming at me for spamming it. And now VMware's frozen. The, the, the preparing automatic repair. Well, thanks. Okay, so if this happens and it can't go to the boot menu, what you can do is, I think it says F10 at the start. Uh, F2. Press F2 at the start. You can go to the BIOS. So spam F2 this time. Just shut up. I don't know why it's not showing me anything. This is really annoying. Uh, there you go. The BIOS is loaded. Go over to boot. There, I pressed right arrow three times, by the way. Up, 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 up. You got this. There you go. I, it's just so slow. So then, um, select the hard drive. Oh, the CD-ROM drive, and then press, okay, so go to the hard drive and press minus, and that'll put the hard drive below the CD-ROM in the boot order. And then press F10 to save and exit, enter. And, guess you here and wait for this, this is fun. Just do nothing. I have no idea why. Okay, the VM is actually restarting. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, start Linux. Man, you know, if you're installing Windows, that won't show up. It'll just go directly into the Windows installer. Uh, I'll just ignore it. There we go. And I'll just pause until it gets to the live boot. Okay, now I'm in the live boot for Linux Mint. So, I should and you know, on Windows, you just click next, 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 next until you're on the drive. And on Linux, typically, either you have to open the installer app or it'll just boot directly to it. This is being really slow because welcome to hard drives and welcome to VMs. That's just how it works. Yes, I want English. And if you're concerned about anything of going from one machine to another, Linux and Windows typically don't have these issues. Mac OS probably will. I'm not really an expert on how Mac OS works, like on the system level or Hackintosh or any of that. So I can't give me any help, any advice for Mac OS. Uh, the best advice would be to just clone the system if you're doing Mac OS, because, like, what else can you do? I don't know. <sighs> yeah, welcome to VMs. Here's where you gotta be careful erase disk and install Linux Mint. Uh, this isn't a vm any anymore like what we're doing where this is like your actual hard drive so you can choose something else if you find something else uh you know if you're on windows you can mainly partition there but i want to just completely erase it and install it and then usually next um yeah it's fine i don't care about those partitions summon uh, linux uh installers just decide okay well i'll install it then but some, oh, wrong button. <laughs> but then some will show you what drive you want to select. And then some will also, like, especially if you're doing the automatic thing on Windows, like the automatic installer thing VMware has, it'll insist on installing to the VM hard drive instead of your actual one. So that's why it's way easier if, back when you were customizing hardware, if you just remove the virtual one completely. Uh, your name, Yoshime. Can you give me your, uh, your show me, me laptop? Is that a password? I think I forgot the, yeah, I forgot the last digit. Oh, come on. There we go. And then acquire my password, encrypt my home folder, yes. And there we go.
So I'm not gonna make you sit through this. I, uh, you know, when it's done on Windows, when you get to the desktop, just shut it down. On Linux, when you're installing it, and it just says, "Okay, uh, restart your system." Now you can just close the VM. For some reason, Windows really, really hates when you at this point go disk management action and refresh. So just do not touch disk management at all. Don't close VMware. That also causes Windows to just have a panic attack. Don't close VMware. Don't mess with disk management. Once uh, the VM is done install is done installing, then shut down your PC and unplug the hard drive while your PC is off because, you know, Windows freaks out. Says, "Oh, there's a problem with this disk. It, I don't know what it does to the disk. I don't know any of that." And it's safer to just be safe and just you know not risk it. Uh, but yeah, that should be everything, and I hope that this helps, but...